Today we're talking about the Next Generation Squad Weapon Program. It's the US Army's attempt to create a new, advanced, primary rifle for the regular grunt. This gun and its polymer plastic ammo would replace the nearly 60-year-old M16 and M4. In our first video, we received many outstanding questions from all of you viewers in the comment section. So I went ahead and I went dumpster diving through the over 4,000 comments to find the diamonds in the rough. I sifted through all the questions about why my arms are so hairy. And we picked out the top 10 most frequently asked questions. Then I called up Pat Hogan, who's the chief marketing officer of this new ammunition, and David Stouffer, who's in charge of the bullpup rifle design, to get their expert knowledge. Oh, and by the way, we just learned that the bullpup rifle official name is Amicus. The main reason for it is because they need the ability to defeat near-peer enemy body armor. Near-peer is, of course, just a politically correct way of saying Russian and Chinese soldiers without actually saying it. The first question we have, what kind of operating system does the Amicus use? This was a fascinating answer to me. The Amicus works on both gas and short recoil. The gas system is more akin to a machine gun, so it doesn't require extensive cleaning like the M4. There are no other military weapons currently being fielded or in production that use this new operating system. It was patented and licensed through General Dynamics and True Velocity, so good luck ripping them off. The purpose of this new system has to do with the recoil mitigation system in the weapon. So in the beginning of the video, I mentioned that this weapon is meant to replace the M4, right? To our new viewers, the reason the Army wants to replace the Legacy M4 is because it fires a 5.56mm caliber, which reports from combat showed many soldiers, many US Army soldiers, believed that the M4 didn't have enough range, so it would be no good against an enemy like Russian or Chinese soldiers who are wearing body armor. So the Amicus fires a 6.8mm Magnum cartridge that is actually more powerful than the 762 by 51 mm round. That's the first I'm hearing of this. It's literally 15 to 20% more powerful than the 762 by 51 mm round, which is the strongest caliber, it's the most powerful caliber that the infantry have that they can carry on patrol currently. Estimates for this new rifle place its max range about 300 meters further at 800 meters and it would take advantage of a new next generation squad weapon optic that could help soldiers reach targets out to 800 meters. This would change everything we know about US Army modern day infantry fighting doctrine. And before we learn more about the Amicus and the polymer ammo and how it stands up to heat tests and cook off specifications for the weapon that I know you guys wanna know about, I have a quick message for you. When I have my tactical breakfast in the morning, I make sure that it's Magic Spoon. I'm actually really glad that they sponsored us because I've started looking forward to Magic Spoon every morning. If you're like me, you have that nostalgic inner child in you where you wanna have sugary cereals, but you know you can't because you're a gross adult and that junk stuff's not good for you. It's part of a healthy breakfast. I get my push-ups in and then I eat my Magic Spoon because it's good for me. It's good for me, it's good for you. Magic Spoon is what you need. It's got 13, 14 grams of protein in it. It's gluten and wheat free. This is keto. It still has that sweet taste. How do they do it? It's magic, voodoo. They put black magic into it. Click the link below and grab a variety pack and try it today. Be sure to use code TASK, T-A-S-K, at checkout to get $5 off any order. Or go to magicspoon.com slash task. The fact that it's gluten-free is perfect. It allows me an opportunity to remind everyone against their will that I'm gluten-free. So click the link in the description and check it out today. So the problem that General Dynamics needed to solve here was how do you make a lightweight machine gun with controllable automatic fire? From an impulse perspective, they believed that the only way to do that was with a controllable recoil mitigation system. In simple terms, the operating group uses the recoil of the weapon and gas to balance the positive and negative recoil forces. So it's not like it has less recoil, but the system makes it feel like the person shooting the gun feels less recoil. David Stouffer was able to confirm to us that the recoil from the 6.8mm rifle is in line with the felt recoil of the legacy old 5.56mm. To put that into layman terms that even I can understand, you're getting twice the power of the old smaller round with the same felt recoil. The reason you want low recoil is because it's hard to do follow-up shots on target with high recoil. So next question, wouldn't it be more complicated because of the internal recoil mitigation system? So that's a reasonable expectation to have because the Amicus is like a machine gun in rifle form. And there are some complicated pieces in there, but it's actually incredibly easy to take apart. 
According to the creators, the disassembly of the Amicus takes about 30 seconds to walk through for your average grunt. This is important knowledge for us to have because if you're a soldier and you're out in the field and you need to troubleshoot your gun or you need to figure out what's wrong with it, you need to know how simple and fast can you fix it. All you have to do is remove the two takedown pins and the entire operating group slides out of the receiver. So it's extremely easy to field strip. I was surprised to learn that the rifle is basically a machine gun. That's new to me. Part of the reason it's simple to operate and take apart is because the barrel is not quick change barrel like on most machine guns. The reason they don't need a quick change barrel is because the gun fires cooler. Once you have it apart, cleaning the weapon is no more difficult and doesn't require a greater level of training than the Legacy M4. A lot of you were curious about the science behind how the gun gets rid of heat. How does the heat react in the chamber with the plastic polymer ammunition? It's tough to wrap our heads around because the answer is a little counterintuitive. Ultimately, when gunpowder combusts, you're creating energy. The energy is either used to propel the bullet forward or it's lost as heat. Since the plastic polymer ammo case has an insulating property, at the end of the day, they're able to be more efficient and utilize more of the energy created by the combustion to push the bullet. So what I'm saying is they're wasting less energy, so it creates less heat. It's called thermal efficiency, which is a concept so difficult to understand it should be illegal for me to even say the word. Basically, the polymer ammunition case generates less heat than a brass ammo case counterpart. In fact, if you want to get more precise, the polymer cased ammo transfers about half as much heat into the chamber as you normally would with brass ammunition. If you want to learn about the US Army's Next Generation Squad Weapon Program in greater detail, I've covered all of the different guns in the competition, their capabilities, their history of development, and I've even gotten a chance to fire most of the guns over the past three years, so check out the playlist here. How easy do the rounds cook off in the chamber? Cook off is what happens when an overheated gun discharges a round. They gave me a hypothetical example. Let's say it takes 200 rounds to get a cook off using normal brass ammunition. Then it generally takes the amicus and polymer ammo around double that number to reach cook off. So hypothetically, it would take 400 rounds for the rifle to reach cook off temperatures compared to the brass rounds where it would cook off after 200 rounds. The weapon is not transferring heat through the cartridge case to the chamber. What it's doing is utilizing and maximizing the energy produced by the powder and using that to push the projectile down the barrel. David Stouffer and Pat Hogan gave me some insight into what the US government actually does when they're testing the next generation squad weapon. Government will say, for instance, we want a weapon to be able to fire 300 rounds on cyclic rate of fire without a cook off. Then they try to stress the weapon that way. They lock the gun up, they let it sit there while it's pointed down range, and they wait for it to cook off. There have been occasions where they've been unable to reach the chamber temperature necessary to induce a cook off. Also, if a round were to hypothetically cook off, it would be a very different kind of event compared to brass ones. A polymer case rupturing would be a low pressure, less dangerous than a brass case cook off would be. Polymer ammo temperature survivability. And they weren't allowed to say the temperature that the ammo can survive being stored at, but they are allowed to say that it meets the Army's mil spec requirement. So I looked it up and I found out that the long term high temperature storage for the US Army mil spec is that it needs to be able to be reliable after 28 days of continuous heat at 140 degrees. And it needs to be reliable after being subjected to 28 days of continuous cooling at negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit. These numbers give us a rough idea of the polymer case's ability to withstand different temperature extremes. So I asked them what could they tell us about the length of pull on the weapon. The length of pull is very similar to the M16, about 13 or 14 inches. They're exploring methods to create an adjustable stock to make the length of pull longer. I also want to point out here that it's been revealed recently that the length of the barrel for the bullpup rifle is 19 inches long, which helps give that bullet a higher velocity. Why does the suppressor look so unique? I asked about the suppressor because everyone was curious why it looked like a soda can or a, a muffler on a car. There are a couple of reasons for the unique looking suppressor. A better question would be, why are the suppressors traditionally long and skinny? The reason for that historically is because you want to avoid obstructing your view when you look down the sights. And they asked them to come up with a solution within the design specs of only a few inches. The suppressor itself is extremely lightweight, far below the government requirements. It exceeded the requirements both for sound suppression and durability. It doesn't need cleaning and outlasts the life cycle of even the barrel. It also meets or exceeds the requirements to mitigate the toxic fumes created by any suppressor. Does the barrel degrade easily due to recoil mitigation? 
The barrel can exceed the government's requirements for its life cycle. And those tests are not just based on shooting 100 rounds to it. They put it through heavy duty threshold tests. The barrel needs to perform on various levels of analysis, including accuracy, velocity of the weapon. Why is there so much smoke coming out of the gun in the barrel? So this, this actually happened because when I test fired the weapon, we were shooting indoors and it's really dark in there. This is likely because we're shooting a powerful magnum caliber weapon, fully automatic with a suppressor. So the gas from the ammo comes out the suppressor and looks that way because we're in a low lighting indoor environment there. What the suppressor is doing is it allows the gas to expand and slowing that down by slowing the gas down and allowing it to expand right at the muzzle, you'll see those similar effects with any gun. Other short questions that you guys asked were wondering if the gun can fire polymer ammo through any weapon. The answer is yes. You can put polymer plastic cased ammo in there and fire it just fine. I'd fired the FNFAL with brass and then polymer, just needed to switch the magazine. Same rifle, no need to change anything else. I'm curious what you guys think of the Amicus and polymer ammo. Do you believe the exciting new technology hype or is it something that you wouldn't be comfortable with on the battlefield? Let us know in the comment section. I'm your average infantryman, Chris Cappy. Follow me on Instagram at Cappy Army. You're watching Task and Purpose. Check out this playlist on the NGSW program if you're interested.